I want to get Blood Torva on my heart grind, man. To do that, I need to kill all four of the Awakened Desert Treasure 2 bosses. This will be the most dangerous grind that I have ever done, even surpassing my Zuck Helm. To get Blood Torva on my Hardcore Iron Man, I first have to kill the bosses on another account. And first up is Leviathan. Now, I've done this a lot of times and I am not going to show all the attempts that I've done because we would have a very long video. So I'll just show some key moments. Okay. The first and probably most obvious key moment is all these tiles that I'm using. Because there is a lot of them and I do agree it looks like a lot. But... Red Eye Jedi cooked up some really good tiles for this boss and it pretty much makes everything up until the Enrage quite free because everything is fully calculated. This means that the chance of me dying before 540 HP is quite small. But there is still a risk. Dying on my heart Wait, what? Whenever Leviathan hits 540 HP or lower, it will proc the Enraged phase. It will spawn an orb in which you'll have to stay in a certain radius of. This means you will not get damaged unnecessarily and you'll be dealing extra damage. And while doing so, you have to pray accordingly to Leviathan's attacks and make sure you dodge the tornado that's following you. You can imagine that this is a lot and things can go south quick. Focusing on both movement and prayer is extremely difficult. And I could mostly do one thing and maybe not the other. I would often click outside of the orb area and because of that, I would have to correct my clicks and miss some prayers every now and then. To help my clicks on the Enraged, I decided to build a wall with the boulders that it shoots out on the special. I'm placing these boulders on the north side of the room to completely block off any potential attempt to leave the orbs radius on the north side. This allows my clicks to be slightly more inaccurate. Other than that, the best thing I can do is just practice a lot and also practice my teleporting, make sure my reflexes are there. All right, potentially the last practice kill. That's a back-to-back -back perfect kill. <laughs> I guess I can't ask for a better practice for the hardcore run than the back-to-back -back perfect kill, because that's never happened before. Okay, I think I'm ready, boys. I think I'm ready. Because I can die at any moment during the Awakened fights, I'm gonna put the full fights in this video. Hands are hella cold. I'm not a fan.
there is almost procking. Very good. That was really humble! Let's go! Oh, thank you, Leviathan! That was so humble, and I got the be I got the best possible proc there. I got the best possible proc, because I lowered it with the Web Weaver, like, to slightly lower it even further, and it got down to, like, wait, no, 542 or something, which is, like, almost the lowest it can get before I enrage. And then I had a, had a massive bow as well. I hit, like, a 79 with the bow. So I got it very low as well. And then I got two web we respect, and it was like basically almost dead already. It was such a nice proc. Oh, and then I got humble hits as well. Bro. And we got a, we got exactly six minute PV. That's kind of cool. However, there is something we missed. This was not the first attempt. In fact, this was my fourth attempt. So let's look at what went wrong. I think that was a good telly, because I it was far from dead still, and I was getting myself in a very shitty situation. Although that start was massively spooned, that start was massively spooned. I'm, I'm kind of sad, but I'm happy with the telly because things are gonna get very nasty. On a good kill, I should have already killed it at that spot. On a good kill, that should have already been dead.
I should have left the moment I missed that prop. Why did I stay, bro? That was very, very stupid of me. Oops. I don't know why I did that. Easy to tell you though, that's fine. Doesn't really matter. Anything, any mistake during the prep is whatever. Duke is up next, with an eye attack that can kill you from any HP. The Duke fight can be quite tricky. However, Red Eye Jedi cooked up some nice towels again, and that made the fight a lot easier. It's basically like a chess game for me. I just have to make sure that every time that Duke is about to attack, I need to be next to him. Duke will be attacking on a 5 tick cycle, lining up perfectly with the scythe. When Duke's hit points hit one third, black orbs will be spawning, going from one side to the other. These orbs can deal up to 27 damage and will drain your stats by 8. By no means should I be fully focusing on dodging these orbs, but if I can, it would be preferred. If you're not standing next to Duke and it's about to attack, it'll shoot a magic orb at you, which can deal up to 71 damage. Tanking this can snowball into a lot of other mistakes. Duke's enraged phase will start below 25% HP. It'll start attacking every 4 ticks instead of every 5 ticks. I'll be using an arc light for the enraged phase as it is a 4 tick weapon and Duke is weak to the arc light. There is one deadly combo that I need to look out for. Duke has the ability to do the eye attack mid acid run. This can be extremely dangerous to deal with especially if there is also an orb in play. I deemed it to be a bullshit mechanic but then this happened. Oh, I might have just found a solve for... I, did that, I just handled that perfectly. I just handled that perfectly. I just... I did the eye with the acid perfectly without taking any unnecessary damage and staying in cycle. Okay. I just solved that. That's pretty nice. Pretty clean. I made I made a just kind of error, I made a tiny error there somewhere, but honestly, bro, it's good enough for me. Time to switch accounts. Let's go. Time for the second one. I would like to battle the awakened Duke. Oh yeah, I don't have to mind four times on this account. That's nice.
One tiny mistake there at the end. We got it. One tiny mistake. Woo! Two down. Two to go. I did the thing with the acid, bro. I was kind of like... Bro, after I did that, I was kind of like, oh my god, I did that. <laughs> I did the I did the perfect acid cycle there. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> oh. The Whisperer is considered to be the easiest one, according to most people. This is because the Awakened version is not that much different from the original. The most important difference is that your sanity does not regen outside of the Shadow Realm. The only way to get your sanity back is by correctly doing the specials. Preserving your sanity is key to beating the Awakened Whisperer. Since it's not viable to stay in the Shadow Realm during the Pillar attack, I take a screenshot when I'm in the Shadow Realm and then go straight out again. This way my sanity stays at a high number. I do not own a Venator Bow, and that's why, for the Ghost Special Attack, I quickly kill the Light Blue Ghosts, as they restore my sanity. By doing this, I should break even, or sometimes even profit my sanity. However, there is a catch, as I will have to tank a bunch of damage at the end of it. As long as I do kill the Light Blue set of Ghosts, this should not kill me. For the Floor Pattern, I decided to stay inside of the Shadow Realm while doing it. Now I do memorize these patterns, however, if I miss two orbs in a row, I could be dead. I'd rather not take that risk if I don't have to do it. I figured out I don't have to do it because I usually had enough sanity left at the end of the kill. By performing an L movement, you should be able to dodge all the tentacles. This is why I place down a reference towel. A towel which I can move around. This just makes it easier for me to confirm that I clicked the correct towel. When Whisperer hits 0 HP, it'll gain 250 HP again, and the Enrage phase will start. On this phase, tentacles will spawn more frequently, and the Whisperer will switch attacks every time. Out of all the DT2 bosses, I've definitely practiced this one the least. Nice! Money! A perfect kill too! Nice! I might, I might lose me my first perfect kill at the Whisperer, where you could... <laughs> I think I've always made it like one little whoopsie. Okay, good. Good, good, good. That is probably the best I could ask for before the hardcore kill, so... Let's go! Let's go! Nice. <laughs> that was really nice.
Alright, well, whatever. And then Kay clicks right there. R1 
Let's go. Three down. And one to go. Oh. Okay, we had a scary moment. One attempt before. This time it was only one extra attempt. I got distracted by someone, I don't know why. <sighs> Luckily, it was not a chance, but it could have been very close. We recovered! Just Vardorvis! And tomorrow, I will have Blood Torva. A big shout out to the community that has been giving me Awakener's Orbs and lending me gear so I can practice the Awakened. Trade me? 100 Orbs from Boalisk. Holy shit. That is gonna help out so much. 50 Orbs from Niels. Mika coming in with another 30. Smuggler with another 30 as well. And Eldenari with another 50. In total, I think we've had over 400 orbs. The Awakened Vardorvis is by far the most deadly Awakened boss. This boss can stack you out in a single tick. Well, there it goes the hardcore boys. I think that's enough death clips to convince you that Vardorvis is extremely dangerous. My biggest learning point at Vardorvis is to not stick to the guides. For me, it just wasn't working. They told me to stick to one corner and it just wasn't working for me. Instead of camping one specific corner, I decided to pick the whole west side, giving me a lot more flexibility in dodging axes. Whenever a spy appears under me, I can dodge it by stepping to the orange tile. The scariest moment will be when it summons three axes on the opposite side, combined with a prayer attack. This means I'll have to run through an axe without prey melee on. It spells easy. <laughs> easy, send it. Under 50% HP, Vardarvis will start using two prayer attacks instead of one, being a mage and a range attack. The only way to tell the order of the orbs is by looking at them. If you miss one of them, your prayer will be disabled for a couple seconds. Axe is spawning. From around 25% HP, Vardorvis can streak the prayer attacks. If you're unlucky, you'll constantly have to do the prayers. Vardorvis' enraged phase starts at 150 HP. Streak attacks are extremely common here. Kill. Okay, it's time.
Yes! Let's go! I got it! Let's go! Let's go, let's go, let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Oh! Oh! <laughs> Bro, I was shaking on the capture. I was shaking on the capture. I couldn't get it. I was shaking too hard. <laughs> I couldn't get it. Oh. It's done. It is done. Ruled 520. I, I was hiding my ruled. Oh my god. Zakalm, I need blood runes. Got plenty of blood runes. Holy shit. It's time to make the blood torva. I've never done this before, because I have the kit on my alt, but it's not my torva, so I didn't transform it into blood torva. Is this how it works? Oh! That looks sick. The first piece has been equipped! The second piece has been made! And now we have the gamer look. I haven't even made the helm yet, but this is the gamer look. Oh wait, let me get my scythe out. Let me get my scythe out for the ultimate gamer look, because I've got- I need the- I need the torture ornament kit. Like, holy- I don't have a bulwark yet! I would- uh, I would love to have put the bulwark on with the Zuck kit, but I don't have a bulwark yet. I do have the kit. He's here! The other- Blood Torva Heart Ryman is here. Wait, this, this feels like... It feels like we've been here before, you know, with uh, Praise Food. I, on the exact same spot. We all know what happened after that. I'm sorry, Shays. Even after obtaining Blood Torva without dying, the grind continues. I have more goals than you might think. Make sure you're subscribed, and I will see you on the next episode.